Hi and welcome to Orbit. Fast charging is harming your battery. At least that is something many people believe, but is it actually true? And if not, why not? I dove deep into the topic and found out a lot. There are three parts when it comes to charging your smartphone. There's first the wall plug, then the cable and of course the smartphone itself. And all plays a role in how safe, fast and reliable the whole system is. First, the power adapter. The rule of thumb is that the more powerful a charger, the bigger it is. The current from the socket must be converted from AC to DC and that generates heat. Many newer chargers do have gallium nitride or GaN in their semiconductors, which has the advantage to generate less heat and therefore you get more power in less space. However, more expensive materials for sure lead always to more expensive products and that's maybe be why Samsung, Apple and Google, they don't even include a power supply anymore. The Xiaomi 13 Pro comes with a 120 watt GAN charger. The Moto Edge 30 Ultra or 40 Pro even come with a 125 watt charger with GAN. The Realme GT3 has even dual GAN technology and that allows charging with 240 watts without the charger being bigger than others. Second, the cable. Talking about so much energy, even the cable must be a special one. A particular a thick one in that case. It does support the maximum ampere that USB can do. A quick summary. To charge fast you do need a fast and expensive power supply and you do need a fast cable and only if you connect those two it works. Third, the smartphone. Lithium batteries do have a comfortable temperature. It is between 15 and 35 degrees and in between that range they feel just great. But if they are above that range they get some harm. So if fast charging peaks above that range, it should be there only really briefly. I plugged in five smartphones at 1%. They were on flight mode and I measured the temperature regularly. First of all, we see that more watts always means that the device charges faster. But we also see that twice as many watts does not exactly mean twice as fast charging. Of course, not all the batteries do have the same size, so I calculated the relative numbers. At the beginning, Samsung and Apple were almost on an identical level. In the end, however, Samsung was almost twice as fast as Apple and even cooler. It is incredible how slow the iPhone was. The last 5% of the iPhone charged so slow that the Realme charged in the same time completely. I was also interested in the temperatures and indeed Motorola got the warmest at 45 degrees, but only for a short time. And if we put that over the entire two hours that the test lasted, it is noticeable that the average temperature on Motorola is actually lower than the one at Apple. And that's because the smartphones just laid there one and a half hours without being plugged in and the iPhone was still charging. But how is it possible that the Moto Edge 30 Ultra and the Realme GT3 charge so fast and yet do not overheat that much? As always, it is not one innovation, it is a bunch of innovations all combined. The bigger a smartphone, the bigger the cooling system can be and the better it can dissipate heat, generally speaking. The Realme GT3 has the largest cooling system of all smartphones. In addition, it has 13 sensors and 60 other levels of security that control the temperature. A fire shield is also built around the heat generating parts and the rest is built from VO plastics. It has the highest flame protection in the industry. What is calculated from volt multiplied by ampere? Smartphones do use 5 volt. That means if you charge them at 15 volt, they do have to convert that to 5 volt and that generates heat. That's why the battery in the GT3 can take 12 ampere, that's 6 times the usual 2 ampere. To avoid heat, the battery is split in two parts. However, a dual cell system needs more space and therefore the battery is about 5 to 8% smaller. And that is why Motorola is using a one cell device. It is a little bit hotter, but on the other hand does have a good cooling system, so it is not that hot. So there's simply a lot of modern technology and development that Apple or Samsung are not using. Realme, Motorola and Oppo, they all claim a battery cycle of 1200 to 1600 and still have 80% of capacity left. That is way more than what Google and Apple and Samsung promise with their 500 to 800 cycle. So 
the battery in those fast charging smartphones is way more modern and therefore the longevity is better. And then there is wireless charging. Wireless charging generates a lot of heat. That means that a fast wireless charger even needs a cooling system that blows air at the device. And you can even see and hear that fan. It's also interesting to me that the Moto Edge 30 Ultra in China does have a 5000 mAh battery but no wireless charging and the global version does have fast wireless charging and a 4600 mAh battery. So it's quite a bit smaller and for me it is not worth it actually and I don't like wireless charging because it makes the battery not only smaller but also generates more heat and so I don't use it personally because there are so many drawbacks. Conclusion. Fast charging smartphones are not the ones with the bad batteries, it's quite the opposite. They just use more modern technology and faster systems with more sensors and more security layers. It's more expensive of course, but I do think it is worth it and I don't fast charge all the time, but there are some situations where I'm really glad that I do have it. And 240 watts right now seems to be the limit. More than that would be kind of difficult to achieve and would have a lot of trade-offs. So I think it's fine to charge in 10 minutes and I don't think that we need 5 minutes. I even think that 20 minutes is plenty fast. So the next time someone wants to tell you that fast charging is harmful, now you know better and you can tell them and send them a link to this video. That's it for me. See you in the next one. Bye.